Hey, what's happening, guys? <clears throat> Thanks for being here today. Uh, this is the day before Thanksgiving here in the U.S. The uh, rest of the world, I guess, it's Wednesday. Anyway, I thought today we would talk a little bit about EMF, electromotive force. And I think the first thing that we need to say about it is it's not a force. Um, a force can be measured in newtons. Um, EMF cannot be measured in newtons. Um, EMF is actually um, potential. It's potential, potential energy per unit charge. And we don't have to get into the whole physics of it. But basically, an electromotive force is its voltage. That's, that's what it is. Electromotive force is voltage. It is potential. It is, as the Chinese put in a lot of their uh, directions, pressure. So if we have a cell and the cell is negatively charged here, positively charged here, then this difference between the charges is the potential energy. Oh, excuse me, is the electromagnetic force. So we can generate an electromagnetic force with a battery. We can generate an electromotive force. I said magnetic, I meant motive force. In many different ways. The simplest way is to pass a conductor through a magnetic field. Now for that, and this isn't going to be the greatest demonstration in the world because this galvanometer is not that sensitive. I wish it was, but it is not. So first of all, if I move the wire, you can see the needle itself is not moving. Let me uh, turn this so I can get this on here for you guys. To, yeah. Now all you see is that light on there. Okay. You can see the needle is not moving. So I have a decently sized Alenco magnet. And if I move that wire through there, you can see the needle does twitch. And <laughs> unfortunately, a twitch is about the best that I can offer with that. But it demonstrates the principle of an electromotive force. And I want to uh, illustrate that for you so that you can understand it a little bit better. So let's say we have two magnets. We have the north pole of this magnet here, and we have the south pole of this magnet here. And this creates magnetic field running from the north pole to the south pole. And then we have this is our meter. <laughs> Pardon my my crude drawing of the meter. And we have our conductor passing through it. What happens is when this conductor breaks those magnetic field plane, those those lines of force, the needle moves. We create the electromotive force. So, um, yeah, if, if, as we're looking down from the top, I'm just going to draw this again here, north, south. There's our lines. We're looking from the top, and there's our conductor, okay? As the conductor is pushed down through it, and then again back up through it, we're breaking those lines of force, thereby creating the electromotive force. However... Here it is again, north, south, lines of force. Again, we're looking down from the top. Lines of force are going across. If we simply move it here, we're not crossing these lines of force. We're moving it with the lines of force. We're not breaking them. Nothing is happening. No work is being done. So what we can do now is we can take this principle that we have here and we can create 
a generator. Very simple. Magnets, North Pole, South Pole. Again, I am not the Bob Ross of drawing here, but you get the idea. There's our magnet. And inside here, if we take a coil of wire, something like this, and then we attach that to our meter here, and we rotate this. As it rotates, it's obviously breaking those planes. And that is the basics of the, of the electric motor or the generator. It depends. Okay, if we apply a kinetic force to this setup, we have a generator. If we apply an electrical force to this setup, then it will turn with the electrical force, well then we have a motor. So you see one is simply a mere image of the other. And now what I want to get into here is as this is rotating and cutting those lines of magnetic fields, it's generating an AC current. It's, it's generating a sine wave. And if we look at that, let me let me redraw once again. I'm going to be redrawing this a hundred times, I feel like, but that's okay. There's our there's our magnets, North Pole, South Pole, right? And here are the two wires of our conductor as we're looking end on. And they are rotating like this. And as they rotate they cut different lines of force and remember our conductor is a loop so it is connected there so at different points in its rotation it's going to cut a number of different lines now we can figure out electromotive force very simply the formula is simply b l v and that is the strength of the field the length of the conductor times the velocity. And that works fine when we're moving a piece of wire up and down through an electric field. But when we start to rotate it, things change and we need to change our formula, our strength of the field times the length of the conductor times the velocity of the conductor times the sine of theta. All right, now I know you just dropped your coffee and said, what the sine of theta? Yeah, don't worry, it's not hard. So let's, uh, let's take a look at our sine wave. And we're going to talk about it in regards to our spinning electric motor and also to a compass with these degrees on it, 0, 90, 180, 270, 0, of course, is also 360. So as we are right here at 0 degrees, our conductor is vertical. It is hardly cutting any lines of force at all. And we are at the lowest point in our EMF. Now, as we move, to this point, to 90 degrees, we are cutting the most lines of force and we are at the maximum point at 90 degrees. When we get here to 180 degrees, we are again at the zero point as this part of the conductor here is now down here. It is simply switched directions. And then when we get to 270 degrees this conductor is now over here and is again conduct or cutting the most lines of magnetic force and finally when we get to 360 degrees we're back to where we started and cutting the least number 
of lines, therefore the least amount of magnetic force. So where does that sine theta play into it? Well, it plays into it if we look at it something like this. Okay, here's again our magnets. These are our lines of force. Okay, and here is our conductor at zero degrees. So at zero degrees, there's our angle. Now here, when our rotation begins, now our angle as opposed to the magnetic field is here. You see that angle is greater. And then here, our angle is the greatest of all. Here our angle is almost nothing. Here our angle is back over here like that. And that's that whole sine of theta. It's just the angle at which our conductor is breaking those lines of magnetic flux. All right. That's enough for Thanksgiving talk, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this. There's going to be more to come with this little guy here, which was a, an incredibly cheap electric motor slash generator that I picked up. Now, remember, as I told you here, when this happens, we're generating an AC current. Because if we were to attach this, not this particular one, but if we were to attach this right here to a galv or galvanometer or, or to a uh, ammeter, the needle would swing back and forth between negative and positive, but it won't here because of what we have here, the commutator, which takes our AC generator and makes it output DC. And that's what we'll talk about next time, all right? Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Happy Thanksgiving. Peace. I'm out.